identify the upline, identify the, uh, the cheerleaders, so that you can really uh, get what this business is about. Benjamin Justin had just written this new song called This Is Me. And uh, we knew that it was going to be the anthem of the film, um, but no one had heard it before. And no one had heard Kiala sing it live. A Kiala who I didn't even want to come out from behind the music stand. I didn't. I, I kept saying to her, just step out, because this is your moment, and you have to step out into the ring, metaphorically, because that's what you're doing, and you got to stand right there in front of everyone and just belt this out. And I didn't want to. In fact, I stood behind that music stand yeah. until the day of that presentation. There was a moment in the song that I actually was so scared that I had to actually grab Hugh's hand so that I had somebody to hold on to. And then we got to the end of the number, and all I remember is just deafening, deafening applause. It was a sort of otherworldly experience. It was one of those moments that will stay with me the rest of my life. Unfortunately, we filmed it. I'm not a stranger to the dark. Hide the away, they say, because we don't want your broken parts. I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars. Run away, they say, no one will love you as you are. But I won't let them break me down.
Dustin, yeah? <laughs> That's cool, huh? I love the words. Look out, here I come. This is me. There's so many things. Um, if you just Google uh, bearded lady, <laughs> uh, greatest showman, it's a brilliant clip. Um, and it's such a great metaphor for this business. And so many women's, in particular, their journey of having that fear and am I good enough and just literally stepping out into their greatness. So I just want to spend a bit of time wrapping up the concepts of this morning and the rest of the time, uh, pretty much just some Q and A, yeah? If you guys have some uh, practicals that you want me to go through and just the day to days of the business. Um, but back to this. So just a bit of a recap. You have uh, this mission, okay, where the dominant emotions when you are on mission is love, is certainty, presence, and gratitude. They're the four healing emotions. They're not really an emotion. Emotion is where you're off. There's a bit of a, the word passion. When you have a charge, a positive or a negative charge, you, you, you know what I mean by a charge. You feel your body get charged about something, either inhalation, which is just as detrimental. Um, you gotta know that. So when you're oh my God, this is amazing. What goes up must come. Yeah. But if you like, this is incredible. From a grounded, centered place is very different. Okay, it's not a high, get the, get the understanding? It's something that's a, a charge. Um, in science, what do you call it? It's an ion. An ion. So if you're in this state where you're always polarized, past, past, back and forth, called passion. We use the word passion in a positive sense. Passion means um, turmoil. When you really look at the word. When someone has thin, tense, ion, intention. Notice any time I've spoken, for those you've seen me a few times, I've always started with my intention today is, and I really encourage you to do that. Be deliberate in your life. I'm meeting this person, what is my intention? I'm gonna do a talk, I'm gonna call someone, I'm gonna sit down for an hour block to do the work of the business. What's my intention? And then you will start to draw in the forces and all of that to make it so instead of just arriving and kind of it's haphazard and I'm distracted. Does that make sense? Very key, before you uh, start working on your business for a block, you reconnect with your values. So your purpose of life is to live your highest values. Do you get that? Can you give yourself permission for that? I did this with my kids, blew my mind. To, to sit down with your eight-year-old and ask those questions in a child's way. What's most important to you? What do you love to do? Is there anything we just like, you could do it all day. You don't have to even stop and eat. And the kids tell you, and you go, that's the purpose of life, for you to do those things. Really? Yeah. Wherever you're shooting, I should do this, I should do that. It's someone else's values that you've put on a pedestal that you've allowed to inject into your life. And it's where all of your stress comes from. It's where all of your um, self-degrading um, thoughts come from, because you're trying to live up to someone else's expectations. Cool, huh? Yeah. So whenever you catch it, I should do, oh, where'd that come from? What's the truth in that? No, I shouldn't do that because it's not one of my highest values. Cool? Can I ask you a question though? Yeah? In a second. Okay. <laughs> so how do you equilibrate this in your quest through 
the aisles. <laughs> you ask questions. That's all this business is, asking good questions. If you tell someone something, it's up for debate because it's your opinion. If I ask you good questions and you help you arrive at your own decision, it's true because you said it. And so the ultimate is to not be toing and throwing. You are like a freight train. I know where I'm going. With your support or with your challenge, I don't care. Because I'm there, baby. And it's just, I have arrived out of my way. Do people follow people like that? Society is craving it. Because that person, when they're in their heart, they, they got the gratitude, they're grounded. I have certainty and I'm projecting from the heart. It's all love. I couldn't hold the attention of an audience if I was being egotistical. Does that make sense? I think you guys sense that. And so, if you're in that state, you miss the audience. It's your mission. Is this cool? <laughs> so set intentions, ask good questions, and reconnect back with your mission. And people will feel a tangible shift. You'll feel it. What would it be like to live life like that each day? That you just got to give yourself permission. And I know where this question's going to come from. So what's your question? Says who? Says who? So going to exercise, what feelings does that bring up? And everyone answer this in your own head. I, I, I don't enjoy doing it, I enjoy being done. Right. <laughs> this, is, this is the practicals now, because this is how we link it back to the business. Is part of your mission in helping and contributing um, the can you make if you don't have that? Right. And so it's not hard for me to go, and this is the next step for you guys. It's a great question. Any part of your life or the business that you're having challenges with, it's not a natural thing to do, you need to link at least 20 benefits of how it connects to your highest values. And it will rewire your brain to go, I'm not going to exercise, I'm on mission, because it's part of the process. Make sense? Um, who did I say this to? I, I didn't put in a customer order until the month I went for 100 up. You, yeah. I hate it, I hate computers. I hate back end stuff. Never logged into my back office. Now, I have a wife who is genius at that. I, um, I'll say it, I'm a freak recruiter. If I want to start 20 people this month, it'll get done. Teach them the business? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Not good. But I'm fortunate that my wife and I, we have a great partnership that she sticks to her strengths, her values, what she's good at, I stick to mine. You may not have that opportunity, but if I had to do those things, I'd go, all right, what's 20 benefits of me getting good at this skill? At least 20. And if it still feels like it's work, it sucks, do 200. <laughs> Seriously. Because all you're doing, you have a lopsided perception of what that thing is. Negative, 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 and it might be to a level of minus 10. 
So you've got to go, link positive, 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 boom, you'll know. Because you have no emotion about it now. You have no charge on it. It's just a thing to do. That's a really good question. Does that make sense? Yeah. Fabulous. Um, that's about all I really wanted to, um, that was my intention for you, to get those few concepts. You only need one or two changes in degree, right? But this shit is sustainable. This isn't a fad, this isn't a technique. This is, you just put on new glasses. You can't see the world the same way again. You can't meet a person now and, oh, people are, or I am, okay? And so when you're starting to judge someone, this is actually really cool. When you're starting to judge someone, just catch yourself and go, okay, I can only see in them what I am doing myself, so where do I do that? That person is so um, condescending. Oh, I am condescending. Where do I do that? I don't. No, you don't, but if you did, where would you do it? <laughs> so for me, uh, I definitely, obviously physical body is important to me. I take pride in that. And I went through a period where I was like, oh, that person's so lazy. Like, look, oh, wait a second, no, I'm lazy. I'm not lazy. Where am I lazy? Money. I don't have a clue what's in the bank account. It's not important to me. I just have a belief that if I need it, it'll show up. <laughs> but that's kind of lazy. Don't do taxes, that's lazy. I'm not saying I don't do my taxes, but you know what I'm saying? So you've got to look around the wheel of life. Most people are familiar if I say the wheel of life, where you look at career and children and relationships and spiritual walk and all of that. So look around the wheel and go, where do I do that? And it will resolve that judgment. Instead of putting that person down, you'll put them in your heart and go, I can learn. So questions are the answers. Where do I do that? What can I learn from this? What am I grateful for? What am I excited about? If you continually ask these questions, you're going to rewire your whole brain. And if you set intention and every day go to the mental gym, Wake up and go, what's my intention for the day? Instead of arriving and going back into bed going, what even happened today? I got a lot of stuff done, but I didn't live my highest values. Cool? So from here, um, open book. If you ask a question, I want to make sure it's valuable for everyone. So just filter your questions based on, okay, can everyone get some value from this? If I don't think it will, I'll just tell you that's a dumb question. No, I won't. <laughs> There's no stupid questions, just stupid people, okay? Because <laughs> people are stupid. <laughs> no, please, go for it. Anything. So it only has a charge in someone. Like if, if I said you're inconsiderate, that's uh, whatever. But if it's something gives you a charge, then it's a problem. And guess what? You'll keep bumping up against the wall until you get the lesson. You'll keep bumping up the wall. And so how am I going to fix this? By asking questions. So where in life are you inconsiderate? Consider there's another hundred plus people here, and you're so important. Your question is the most important. Oh. How are you considering? <laughs> 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 Anyone else want to ask a question? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I went into any hard deep. Then. I'm sorry. <laughs> but sometimes this is where you, you, if it 
gets too far away from centre, you can't, you can't get it done yourself. You need someone to ask you the questions and start to probe. What about here? What about there? When's the time in life you've been inconsiderate? Uh, probably many, many times. Um, That's not a good answer. So you need to go specific. <laughs> so not inviting someone to something because someone else was there. That's one that's really bothered me that I did one time. Yeah. Like Have you um, ever not shared the product with yes. someone? Yeah. Is that inconsiderate? It's very inconsiderate because it was out of my fear. Because you're thinking about yourself. That's right. So whenever you're not putting other people values and asking questions, I would consider that not considerate. Right. That was a weird thing to say. And so you want it, you ask enough questions to you check in and go, oh, I have no charge about that anymore. And it could be, you know, you need to go back and get specific and go around the wheel if it was 20 specific and you need to go back to that space, to that time, and be there. And that's what's going to equilibrate. It can't be a, oh yeah, stacks of numbers. Tell me an exact time. Who was there, what were you doing? Go back to that time, breathe it in, see it, feel it. It's okay, when was another time? Until you literally, it just goes, boom, quantum leap. Fantastic. And yeah, whatever questions, but I was hoping uh, if you want to get granular on anything business, how we do it, like I'm open book, I'm here to serve, shoot. I have a few questions. Nice and loud. I was going to ask a question, but I know many of you are related to this, is uh, when you approach someone for either a product or business, and that person, you see kind of procrastinating with you an answer, but the person basically says, I'll leave you on the side to see how you do it, So if I've been, just so I understand the question. Yeah, so if I've been chatting to someone, I've had a direct conversation, hey, let's roll. And they're like, ah, oh, I just want to watch. Is that the question? Yes, because you see they're not telling you yes or no. Yes. They're telling you between the lines, I'm going to see how you do it or how this product does it, what's the result, and then we can talk. Beautiful. But that's not like Great question. Me. Great question. That's not very often to me, in my experience. Yep. Beautiful. Um, don't put people in a corner. Don't put people in a corner where they can say yes or no. Because Linda never did that to me. If she did it and I said no, your, your strongest force in the, in the human brain is to remain true with how you identify yourself. Do I need to say that again? The strongest force in the human psyche is to remain true in how you identify yourself. So every time you say, I am just no good with names. I am lazy. I am not good at exercise. Your brain doesn't want to make a liar out of you. So it will continue to do the things, meet the people, to collect data to justify you're correct. <coughs> so if Linda said, oh, come on man, just join me. You're crazy. I'm a you should see what we're doing. And I said no, it, it's a long turn back in my mind to then go yes. Does that make sense? Whereas if it's just, you know what man, that's awesome. Because six years on, and now the timing is right, and now it became a higher value. This is really, really important. Think about any decision you've made in purchasing something choosing a partner, choosing a car, choosing the shoes, and really think about the questions you ask yourself why you chose it. And I challenge you that if a lot of it was what will people think of me? How will I look in this? How will I feel? But mostly, how will I be perceived? True or true? It's why you chose your partner why you chose what to wear today. It's not right or wrong, it's just bringing light onto it. 
And so it's called status. So if I'm a chiropractor, three degrees, I'm a doctor, and you're asking me to be a network marketer, what will people think of me? In my mind, did my status just go up or down? Yeah. Down, every time. Until I had such a jolt where, I think I told the story last night, I forget what I told when. <laughs> um, Jeff Roberti, I wind up at a luncheon. I'll tell the whole story real quick. We come back from Memphis, Kate gets started on the business, I go back to work, chiropractic. Buddy of mine, well to do, turns 40, and a bunch of us are gonna go climb Everest, not to the top, but we climb part of Everest. About to go, avalanches come, we don't go. At the same time as conference is on in Australia. So I'm like, oh, it's free, Hamilton Island, let's go. So I go along, I'm not even gonna go to the conference. Um, Kate had done really well, she had achieved a, a reward challenge. It was a, a luncheon or like a morning tea. Jeff Roberti had come over, Lawrence Logan had come over. Kate's like, I just come along. I walk in the room and I immediately like, I shouldn't be here. Because I could sense everyone had earned to be at the table. And uh, I said to, to Linda, oh my gosh, I, I shouldn't be here. She's like, you know what, stay. Changed my life. So I'm sat opposite Jeff Roberti and he asked one question. Where will you be in 20 years? I'd only ever asked myself what network marketing could be in 12 months compared to what I earned as a chiropractor in 12 months. And it never ever stacked up. So why would I risk the status loss that, does that make sense? So I attend the conference, I take a phone call um, finishing the conference and it's one of my chiropractors going, I've got bitten by a spider, I can't come in this week, oh, by the way it rained and the x-ray machine got wet and I'm like, okay, a lot of pain, traditional business. Get home, um, surf's amazing, I call a buddy of mine, he's a mentor for 20 years, he's been in practice. And I said, Lawson, let's go for a surf. He's like, I can't, I'm doing a spinal screen. And so when I promote, I told it last night, I remember now. So when I was in practice, I would go out into the community. I'd go into gyms and shopping centers and fates and I'd have my spine, I'd be like, hey, would you like a free spinal check? Hey, would you like a free spinal check? Hey, would you like a free spinal check? Oh, you would, oh, that's a beautiful top. Where did you get that from? Come, anyway, I got good at it. Because I realized what worked and what didn't. And so to picture me 20 years from now, still doing spinal screenings or Jeff Roberti. Okay, I want that status. And that was the shift. I'm like, I don't care what anyone says because when I put my mind to something, I'm gonna get there. And I don't care if you're a chiropractor, I don't care if you're a lawyer, because I'm the one who's surfing through the middle of the day now. And I could already see that, that was the intention I set. So in my mind, my status was already up here. Does that make sense? So it's really important you think about how is that person perceiving this opportunity? And how can I connect the dots to go, your status is gonna be through the roof. Do you want a few practicals on how to do that? Yeah. So here's what happens when you take our product. Imagine waking up in six months from now and you're not on your medication. Imagine when you hop into your swimsuit and you're walking along the beach, uh, walking along the snow, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we do have beaches. Yeah, but I know, I saw beautiful beaches. <laughs> Up in Collingwood, longest freshwater beach in the world. <laughs> I listen and your husband looks at you how he used to, how would that make you feel? Like a cougar. <laughs> so what did I do? What did I do? Not just their pain, 
I painted a word picture of their destination. People don't buy the product, they buy the promise of what the product could provide in where they want to go. So here's what happens when, when you join our team and listen to the words. So here's what happens when you join our team. What does that presuppose? They're already joined. You're already joined. There's no, are you joining? So here's what, and they may say no still, but all your language is inclusive. I, I don't care if it's you or the next person. Here's what happens when you join our business. I'm already there. So you guys need to start acting and feeling and breathing like you're already 100 Club Energies, if that's what you desire. There's another tangent there. I won't go there. Um, but now I forget what I was going to say. So when you join our business, here's what happens. When you've already asked a bunch of good questions and you already know what the destination they want, so here's what happens. Then let's say we've been chatting and, um, and I meet someone and they're like, what do you do, what do you do, I uh, work, this sucks, okay, what would you love to do, I'd love to travel more, where would you go, man, I'd go everywhere. You know what, you might be good at what I do. What do you do? I help people who create an income online so they get to travel and do what they want when they want. So if you're curious, I can send you some information. You'd be like, yeah, I would, that'd be cool. Let's connect on Facebook. That night, hey, so good to connect today. Um, really loved hanging out, blah, 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 compliment. Hey, we chatted about creating this online income stream. Let me know if you still want to take a look. I get permission again. That'd be really cool. Send them a link, whatever's appropriate to them. And then when I follow up, hey, what did you like best? How could you see this working for you? Listen, listen, listen. Anything else you need to know to get started? Here's what happens when you join our team. We had this girl, Shani, she was a nurse. Within 12 months, she replaced her income. Now, she's literally on a 12 month honeymoon around the world. Could you imagine what that would be like for you? What would the, what would the people at your work think? What would you love to just give your boss? Like one of those? <laughs> <laughs> what are they picturing in their mind now? Gee, I'd love to give your boss one of those. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like I painted a vision for them. I told a story. I'm there, baby. So the, she's so cute. <laughs> you can't compete with kids. <laughs> So it's called painting a word picture. You help people feel the feelings of their future now. People aren't buying your product, people aren't buying the business, they're buying the promise of that destination of what they desire. If I've asked good questions, I know what they desire. I can connect a story to it, I can paint the picture for them. Is this helpful? Cool? A little different or a lot different than your approach has been? A lot. Some of you, you're like right on it. Some it's a couple of degree change. And, and don't, um, I'm not saying this is the only way and this is what's worked for me. You know, I've been taken as many notes from the previous speakers as you did. You know, as soon as you stop learning, you stop growing, it means you're dying. So continually learning. Are we close? What's the time? <laughs> Welcome. Any other questions? Uh, did I even answer the question? He's gone. He's so disappointed. He left. <laughs> so the question was, if I've been chatting to someone and they're sitting on the sideline, what do I do? I continue to build the relationship. I would put them on a list um, so they're top of my mind um, and I do clam. Comment, like, hey, how are the kids? Hey, how's work? I'm constantly there. So when they have that moment of life sucks, boss sucks, this sucks, I didn't sign up for this, tell me about that thing. Cool? Yep. Shoot. So I'm just you know, starting to build my business. Yes. How do I know when I'm having conversations and I'm asking good questions? 
How does a comedian know they're doing a good job? People laugh. How do I know I'm asking good questions? People give good answers and they lean in. You're asking the wrong questions if you go, oh, it's snowy. <laughs> How about those, I don't know, what's up? <laughs> you know? Is that, is that helpful? And so there's, yeah. You usually got one or two leeway. Ask a bad question, person's not going to walk off. Ask a couple in a row, it's like, yeah, anyway, I'm going over here now. <laughs> and honestly, I only got good at this. Um, I have a little saying, fail forward fast. You're going to mess up. Most of us want to be perfect. You are perfect, but you will never be perfect. You're going to mess it up. But here's what happens. I was thinking about this as I was walking back here. Do you guys have sand pits? I'm getting some... A sand pit. Like for kids to play in. A sandbox. Because then I'm like, well, where in Australia, there's the beach, there's, I guess, you need sand, anyway. Sandbox. Um, I hope, whatever, it's going to offend some people, whatever. <laughs> Did, oh. you got to do and so you're scraping along scraping along and you feel something mushy <laughs> <laughs> and you squeeze it and you actually pick it up and you can see it you don't have to put it in your mouth <laughs> To know it's not a diamond. <laughs> okay? So I'm talking to someone and they're, oh, that's, that's just this. That's just one of those things. They're not a diamond. So just keep digging. Okay? But what do we do? What have we done in the past? Oh. You should have seen this shit the other day. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like shit, it smelled like it, it looked like it, it even tasted like it. Do we do that? We spend all this time. Someone asked it, how my business would only be here if I didn't focus on the negative. You're not a diamond, next. To infinity. So uh, back to the question, which is not here, but it's a good question. You've got to have an abundance mentality. If you're in this scarcity, like, oh, there's not enough people. Who knows how many people are on Facebook right now? It's about a billion. How many of them could do with more energy? Oh, how many of them could have an extra income stream? A few. How many of them already have your values? So it's just a full abundance mentality. If someone is just like, too hard basket, next. It doesn't mean dump them, comment, like, message, keep top of mind. Cool? <coughs> Sandbox, done. I referred to when we got to SSC, <clears throat> by the time we got to NMD, None of the team that got us to SSC were with us anymore. No. If I was growing a garden, even if I wasn't, when you look at nature, how do trees grow? Then that falls away and allows new growth. 
and that falls away and then you grow. And if you're a good gardener, what do you even do? You prune. You actively, to do what? Allow? That if you're like, oh, dead branch, it's not really dead. I know it's brown and it's wilting. I think I can save it. <laughs> Who am I talking about? <laughs> that teamy. That teamy. Just leave them alone. Okay? Let them die and they might rebirth. But for now, just prune them. And I don't mean like, oh, you kick them out of your Facebook group, you're not coming to conference them. Not that. Still love them, appreciate them, but in your mind, you don't hold space for them. <coughs> Because that just frees up and you're very clear to the universe, I'm on a mission and I can't make, you know what, into diamonds. Helpful? That's my tree analogy. <laughs> you cannot grow to ever evolving concentric spheres of influence unless you're prepared that 50% of the people who follow you will hate you. Will hate you. I'm okay that I've challenged a lot of you. Your beliefs pissed you off, what would he know, stupid Aussie, all that stuff. <laughs> and I don't care. And it feels really good. <laughs> this is going to piss some people off at least 50% of the room maybe even 100 because of the room I don't know anything about politics and I don't know anything about Donald Trump that's my free phone <coughs> arguably in a position of one of the greatest powers on planet Earth right now, could I say that? Why? Because he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> he will happily polarize half the planet. And the other half, you've got to take something from that. So if you're trying to make everyone like you, <laughs> Aren't you glad you came to me? <laughs> We're not still recording, are we? <laughs> What's corporate think of this? No comment. <laughs> when you are so on purpose, so on mission, no, you're dumb, company's dumb, network marketing sucks, whatever. I want that. Oh, I wanted the NMDs to do something right at the start. <coughs> if you could do this real quick, guesstimates is okay. How much have you earned since you started? Just make it up as close as you can. So NMDs, how much have you earned? And I'm not gonna get you to say it. And how many people have you recruited frontline and approximately what's your conversion how many conversations do you need to have to get a person to start so what I want you to do I want you all to do this as we wrap it up I'm going to ask you in a second because what I want to find out how many conversations have you had compared to how much you've earned and if we divide it, we're going to get how much has every conversation been worth to you? Including the no's. For me, it's over a thousand dollars a conversation. And I'm a baby. I'm a baby four years in. Because what happens, if I have no more conversations in another year, I've got paid a whole stack more, it just goes on and on. And that's the beauty of this business. You're going to get well underpaid for the first part of it. Well underpaid. But you've got to understand every conversation you have, if you're going to play the long game, it's going to be worth $100, $500, 1000 
in the long term. Who wants to go have, because I saw what happened, you did the numbers. Who's excited now to go have conversations? <laughs> Count me out. But if I said every conversation's worth 100 bucks, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? So, the first thing I said today, business is relationships. Relationships is conversations. How do you get into more conversations? Part of the room is well versed in social media, part it's just like become this scary monster, do we post once, do we post five times, it's irrelevant. Social media is a tool to leverage getting into lots of conversations. That's it. Would you agree? Don't make it any harder than that. If I had to go have 100 conversations in a day in real life, where would I go? Uh, yeah, mall, I don't know, casino. Would I know that they have my values? No. I can go to a group where I know, if you're in that group, you're probably gonna have these as your top two or three values. And I can go and do exactly what you instructed this morning. Add people, comment, like, get into message, cut, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste. Just start the conversation. Did I say the right thing? How does a comedian know they did a good job? You don't know until you have it. And so when I was in the shopping centers, going, hey, we'd like a free spine check. That was conditioning. Um, it was mentioned today, don't compare yourself to people. Um, four years in the business, yes, but I've been doing this for at least probably 20 years. Does that make sense? I've done a stack of personal development. All of this stuff I knew coming into the business. I'd stood in shopping centers asking people a hundred times, you know, we like re rejection, I don't understand what that is. I just want to help people today, and if you don't want help, that's okay. Next, next, someone will. So don't compare yourself. If you knew Ryan Marsh's background and strategies that he applied, I don't think anyone would walk his path. You wouldn't have the intestinal fortitude. <laughs> I haven't. Brian Marsh is another guy on the Gold Coast. Someone asked me this the other day. We have in my little town, it's like probably, I don't know, 500,000 people live where we are. Uh, we have 10 100 clubs. 10 100 clubs in that town. That's pretty cool. We haven't done a Thursday night event live in four years. Like just, you want to run with the pack, we just got a good pack. And there's been lots of, you know, segregation and all that. We're really just coming back together now and going, okay, this needs to be bigger than us. This needs to be about the planet and the profession and the company which is really cool. So Brian Marsh, he had a background in digital marketing for 20 years. He had a whole team of people who knew how to get people in front of opportunities. And so he would fill hotel beds, that was his thing. And so when he saw um, some people he knew living this lifestyle, he was curious. Got his head around the business and went, it's just another opportunity, it's just another product and just plug that system into this. And so just had mass amount of conversations, but at a fair investment. And I don't tell you, he's a, a friend of mine, I love him, but it's really dumb to go, I'm a stay at home mum, and I'm just working out where the button is on Facebook to, and compare it to him. Does that make sense? Like I'm on page one and he's on, you know, chapter 15,000. And so, yeah, he did amazing. He, um, he was like NMD, 39 club in yeah, like 10 months. 100 club in like 14 months. Cool.
I'm just going to keep talking unless we wrap it up. What's the time? Oh, brilliant. We might wrap it up then, huh? <laughs> so I, um, I am so grateful. Uh, like I said, if you haven't been able to tell, um, this is me in flow. I love this time stand still. It's like basketball timings. Um, it's why I, 